Chances are, if you've ever bought a physical game, you've seen one of these in the lower left corner, an age rating. Just like TV shows, movies, and music albums have their own rating systems, video games too have their own special age rating system. Video game rating systems allow retailers to stop kids from getting access to mature games without the AOK -okay from a parent or guardian first. Depending on the country, these rating systems are either a hard rule that stores must follow or they're basically just suggestions. The rating system used by the US and Canada is the Entertainment Software Rating Board, aka the ESRB. They were created in 1994 after a ton of controversies related to violence in video games. Some of the main targets of controversy being Mortal Kombat, Night Trap, Lethal Enforcers, and Doom. So, to avoid any further trouble, tons of big names in the video game industry like Nintendo, Sega, and EA all got together and helped start up a trade association, and this association was called the Interactive Digital Software Association, later renamed to the Entertainment Software Association. Through this association, the ESRB was born. The ESRB originally had five ratings, EC for Early Childhood, K to A for Kids to Adults, T for Teen, M for Mature, and AO for Adults Only. EC is for kids aged 3 and up, and games with this rating tend to only be educational games. K to A is like a catch-all for a game that's suitable for just about anyone and everyone. T is for people aged 13 and up. These games might have more realistic violence, some mild curse words, and maybe some naughty stuff. Mature is for people 17 and up. At this point, you're getting into some pretty graphic violence, heavy swearing, and you might actually see a titty or two. Finally, you've got adults only, or as I like to call it, an obituary. Because if a game gets this rating, it's basically dead on arrival. Adults only games are only for adults age 18 and up. These games tend to have things like super bloody gory violence, extremely explicit SEX content, or gambling. There is only one game ever that got an AO rating for gambling. That was Peak Entertainment Casinos released in 2003 for the PC. The game allowed you to gamble with real life money, which might be the reason why it was restricted to adults only. Most console manufacturers won't even allow these games to be published on their platforms, and many retailers refuse to stock these games. So besides putting your game on PC, there isn't much you can do. It's incredibly rare to see a game get released with an AO rating. Heck, it's even rare to see a game get an AO rating before it's released. Publishers have to get their games to the ESRB before the game releases because most video game consoles require a rating for the game to be released on their platform. If the game does get an AO rating, you'll commonly see them censor the game by removing the content that's pushing it from a 17 to an 18. The last game to get an AO rating was the 2015 shooter Hatred. There was a huge controversy about the game due to its use of heavy violence, and it even got pulled from Valve's Steam Greenlight system for new games until Valve's president, Gabe Newell, issued an apology to the game's developer, Destructive Creations, and got the game put back up on Steam. Now, just because there are very few games to get an AO rating doesn't mean there aren't plenty of games coming out every single day that could easily get the rating. As I alluded to before, the PC space is like the Wild West. Many of these games are indie games or games released by smaller companies who don't need to publish on consoles to turn a profit. That's just how things have gotten over time, I guess. Originally, the ESRB had these pixelated logos, which in some cases looked really good like on PS1 discs, and in some cases just looked nasty like on some box artworks. It can be hit or miss, but overall these are super nostalgic. In 1998, the ESRB rebranded the K to A rating to the iconic E for Everyone rating. Strangely though, despite being called E for Everyone, in some ESRB materials, it claims that this rating is for people aged 6 and up, which seems like wrong. Do kids 5 years old and younger just not exist? You can't call it E for Everyone if it's not for everyone. Only a year later in 1999, all of the ESRB ratings were changed from the pixelated logos to the new cleaner black logos. I can go back and forth on which logo style I like better. I have more memories with the black logos, but the old school pixelated ones are more interesting to look at. Because games often get reprints thanks to stuff like Sony's Greatest Hits and Nintendo's Player's Choice programs, there are actually some games that have prints with the original KA rating and prints with the E for Everyone rating. That got me thinking. Were there any games out there that got prints with the KA rating, the E for Everyone pixel version, and the E for Everyone black version? The game would have had to be printed multiple times at very specific points in time. It would have needed to be printed before the KA rating was rebranded in 1998, it would need another print during the very short time that the E for Everyone pixel version was used, and it would need another print sometime in 1999 or later after the E for Everyone black redesign. Unfortunately, there isn't a ton of information I could find online that detailed the different prints 
printings of video games, the only game I could find that had all three ratings is Donkey Kong Land 2 on the Game Boy. I've seen all three versions of the game up on eBay, but to be honest, I'm no Donkey Kong Pro, so I don't know if the E for Everyone Pixel version of the game is legit. I'm pretty sure the KA and E for Everyone Black versions are official though. If you guys know if this is legit, or if you have any information on other games that I had three different printings with KA, E for Everyone Pixel, and E for Everyone Black, then please let me know in the comments. The next major update for the ESRB came out in 2005 with the introduction of a brand new rating E10+, for everyone 10 and up. The first game I remember getting that was rated E10+, was... When I first saw this, it honestly felt kinda special. The E10 Plus rating felt like it was just made for Shadow the Hedgehog. It's a game that little kids probably think is hardcore and cool, but anyone over the age of 12 is like, this is the most hilarious thing ever. In 2018, the ESRB stopped using the EC rating, probably because it was very rare for a game to get this rating. I can only recall seeing an EC rated game maybe once or twice out in the wild. So now there's only five ratings, but honestly, it may as well only be four since the last game that was released with an AL rating was Hey back in 2015. I guess technically there are two other rating categories, I'm only mentioning them because they're both listed on the ESRB's actual website. These are RP for rating pending and RP likely mature 17 plus. These are symbols used in promotional materials before a game has actually been released. RP is for games that don't have a rating. RP likely mature 17 plus is a new rating that's only been in use since 2021, and this is for games that don't have a rating but are probably going to be rated M for mature. As a bit of some fun trivia, did you know that apparently out of every game that got an ESRB rating in 2022, half of them got an E for Everyone rating? The safest option when making a game is to make it E for Everyone. That way, it's family friendly, but more importantly, advertiser friendly. Okay, I think I've talked enough about the American system. Let's head over to Europe and talk about PEGI. The Pan-European Game Information, aka PEGI, is the European Game Age rating system. This system is a little newer than the ESRB as it came into use in 2003. PEGI has six different ratings. First, you've got the lowest rating, PEGI 3. The big three would make you think it's for three-year-olds and up, but basically this rating is used for games that should be suitable for everyone. Next is PEGI 7 for people aged seven and up. This is a game that might have a bit of violence or some content that'll scare young kids, but not much else. Peggy 12 is for people 12 and up, and games with this rating might have a bit more realistic violence, some bad language, or some lewd stuff. Peggy 16 is for people age 16 and up. At this point, you're probably getting plenty of violence, plenty of bedtime fun, plenty of drugs, or some sort of combination of the three. Finally, we have Peggy 18, which I would say is Peggy's version of adults only, but that's not entirely true. Unlike in North America, in Europe, an 18 plus rating isn't a death sentence. Although to be fair, tons of games in America that are only rated M for Mature are rated 18 and up in Europe. Like for example, Cyberpunk 2077, Dead Island 2, and GTA 5. Then you've also got some M for Mature games in America that are only given a Peggy 16 rating in Europe, like Elden Ring and Soul Hackers 2. Probably the weirdest discrepancy between the ESRB and Peggy is that there are some games that are only rated T for Teen by the ESRB. SRB, meaning games for 13 year olds and older that are rated 18 and up by Peggy, like The Legend of Heroes Trails from Zero, Poker Club, and Blanco's Block Party. I looked for a while, but unfortunately I couldn't find anything overtly egregious like an E for Everyone game being rated Peggy 18 or a Peggy 3 game being rated M for Mature. However, I do have something kind of cool to talk about. There's one last Peggy rating. You're probably wondering, is it Peggy 21 plus? Maybe 30 plus? Oh, what about 40 plus? Exclamation point. Yeah, I guess I was getting bored of numbers too. This odd rating, from my understanding, is used for applications like Twitch or YouTube, which are technically available for everyone to use, but may have some disturbing or inappropriate content, so parental discretion may be needed. There are also some country-exclusive Peggy ratings. Portugal used to have a Peggy 4 rating instead of a Peggy 3, and a Peggy 6 rating instead of a Peggy 7. Finland had a Peggy 11 instead of a Peggy 12, and Peggy 15 instead of a Peggy 16. Eventually, Finland and Portugal decided to get with the program. They stopped using their own special unique Peggy ratings and just used the same Peggy ratings that everyone else was using. The Australian classification rating system is pretty cool as they use the same rating system for films as they do for games. G for general is basically their E for everyone. 
PG for parental guidance is like the PG rating used for movies in America. These are games that probably aren't going to do much damage to your kids, but maybe you should get a parent to check it out first. M for Mature is for more intense games, but legally children under 15 are still able to buy these games. Once we get to the next category, Mature Accompanied aka MA15+, is when legally kids cannot purchase these games. Finally, for video games is Restricted aka R18+, which as you would expect is a rating given to games only suitable to people 18 years old or older. There is one rating that is exclusive for films, and that is X18+, which is the uh, stuff you probably don't want your mom walking in on you watching. Of course, there's the ratings pending equivalent called Check the Classification, aka CTC, but probably the most interesting rating is one used for games that are outright banned in Australia. This is a special rating called RC, which stands for Refused Classification, and games that get this rating cannot be legally sold in the country. Australia has become something of a meme as they seem to ban a ton of games. Australia has definitely gotten better recently as some of the games that were at one point banned, like RimWorld, Disco Elysium The Final Cut, and Katana Zero, were eventually released off of the ban list without any censorship. Although, some games that are still on the ban list as of the time I'm writing this video include Postal 4, Sludge Life, and Hotline Miami 2. Brazil has their own rating system as well, called the... Uh, Class End. They have L for general audiences, but every other rating uses a number. After that, we have a 10 plus rating, a 12 plus rating, a 14 plus rating, which I don't think we've seen yet today, a 16 plus rating, and an 18 plus rating. There was another rating that they had before, but it hasn't been used in like 15 years, and that's ER, the only other rating with letters. And this one is kind of like the EC rating for the ESRB. It's stuff that's more appropriate for kids. Russia also has their own rating system, and it's pretty simple. 0+, 6+, 12+, 16+, plus, and 18+. The last rating system I'll talk about today is Japan's rating system, the Computer Entertainment Rating Organization, aka Zero. Zero started in 2002, so they managed to beat Peggy by a little bit. The first of Zero's ratings is A for all ages, which is pretty self-explanatory. B for 12-year-olds and up, C for 15-year-olds and up, D for 17 year olds and up, and finally Z for 18 year olds and up. I think it's pretty redundant having a 15, 17, and an 18 rating, but hey, otherwise, this system is pretty simple stuff. Although, as usual, there are some special ratings, like Education and Database, which is used for educational games and utility apps. Then there's Rating Scheduled, which is used for unreleased games that haven't been rated yet, and Regulations Compatible, which is used for game demos. There are a couple of other rating systems like Germany's rating system called the USK and South Korea's Game Rating and Administration Committee, but they're not particularly interesting. It seems as though age rating systems are becoming less and less important as years go by thanks to the prevalence of online game storefronts. Before, you might have needed permission from your parents to buy M-rated games as some game retailers had policies to turn you down from buying an M-rated game if you were a kid. However, you can easily buy a gift card for your online game storefront of choice from a variety of places and you won't even need to worry about having a credit card which may have otherwise been a barrier to entry for someone under the age of 18. So parents, keep an eye on what what your kids play? I don't think video games are going to turn your kids into psychopaths, but it also probably isn't okay for your 7 year old to be playing GTA. But uh, yeah, that's about all I have to say today about video game age ratings.